Okay, so we're here obviously at Locomotion today and uh, people may know Simon's face obviously from, uh, from previous careers uh, but today he's here with, uh, with Brian at Locomotion and I'll leave Brian and Simon to explain a little bit about their uh, uh, the respective roles. Well thanks Andy, um, obviously I think most people know we've had uh, quite an interesting uh, development phase for Locomotion models over the last 10 years. And we've now grown to a size where it really wants some uh, uh, more full-time attention to the business and I'm able to give it. Uh, and Simon and I have been working together now for the last 12 months and uh, I think he hit it off fairly well. Yeah, yeah. Uh, and uh, uh, it, it was a natural progression for Simon to, uh, to move into a, uh, a more formal role of locomotion models and I'm actually delighted that uh, after a little bit of persuasion he's actually agreed to do that. Um, we have an exciting programme in the year ahead, uh, probably the busiest we've ever done. Uh, you'll know the models we've already got out there in the marketplace, uh, particularly to have just launched the Atlantic, we've got the APTE coming in the autumn. Today we've announced Sterling Single with Rapido and we're full programme with both uh, Backman and Hornby uh, over the, the next few months. So Simon's going to have his hands full and be very, very busy. I'm delighted he's joined us and uh, he's fitted in with the team extremely well. Uh, and made a cracking start. So. No, I, I'm, I'm really pleased and actually quite honoured to be asked. Um, there is a lot to do, as Ron said, but um, using the expertise that you know, I, I picked up over the years where Holmes was concerned, um, I can put that to good use. And although uh, I'm, I'm confident that there will be a, a couple of little hiccups along the way, I'm sure one day I'll get it right. <laughs> okay, so a little bit about the uh, the project that we're here for today, that being the Sterling Single. So, uh, why choose the, uh, the Sterling Single first of all? Well, it, this will this will be, I think, our twelfth uh, product uh, in generic terms that, we, that we've done in the National Collection in Miniature Series. About twenty variants overall so far, if you count the sound weathered and other options with the second runs we've done. Um, but it's getting harder and harder to find the iconic uh, model from the collection that is actually going to sell in sufficient volume to justify as tool in it, particularly uh, where we want to re retain exclusivity. I've, for the last five years I've thought that the Sterling Single was uh, one of the things that we should be doing. I always thought it would have immense appeal, um, but it is a sing almost a single class. Uh, and uh, difficult to justify the volume uh, that the traditional manufacturer, manufacturers have looked for. Um, Rapido operates a slightly different business model uh, and with the success we've had with APTE, uh, when we were trying to decide what would we do next with Rapido, uh, this sterling single, number one behind us, actually kept coming back and back to the floor. Um, it's also one of Bill Schneider's favourites, so <laughs> it was inevitably go that, that route at some at some point. Yeah. But it is one of a number of choices that we did have. But yeah. this was the one that we thought um, for now. It's also a breakthrough product for Rapido, because it'll be the first steam locomotive mm. Rapido's ever done. Uh, and with their uh, attention to detail, uh, I was confident we were going to get an absolutely cracking model. Yeah. It is a difficult subject to model, though, and we've got a lot of challenges to. Uh, uh, to address now in the engineering. Yeah, what do you see the challenges being with this loco then? Well, if you turn around and look at it, the biggest challenge is the front bogey. Yeah. And if you actually look at it as a 442, which is what we're looking at here, then clearly uh, swinging that bogey around the second radius curves with the splashes on mm. uh, is going to be uh, something that we're going to have to be extremely innovative about yeah. to actually achieve successfully and realistically. And as a 4 mil double O model, obviously the, uh, is there going to have to be compromises with respect to the clearances of the main driver behind the splasher? Well, we don't like compromises. We like to be as accurate as we possibly can. And we've proved with the Atlantic how with clever, really clever engineering design from Backman, uh, we can actually get the, uh, the model as near perfect as, as we possibly can. Inevitably, in, in, when you're measuring, when, when you're modelling at four millimetre scale, 
uh, compromises have to be made. We're not doing 12 inches to the foot. Yeah. <laughs> and I think that's what the, uh, particularly the critics that actually look at these things need to understand. Yeah. Uh, Modelling at four millimetre scale is a compromise, however you do it. But we will try and get it as accurately as, accurate as we possibly can. Yeah. Now you are building variation into the model. Obviously we've got the, uh, the two different tenders here actually being scanned uh, today as well. So that there is going to be sort of like some variety in the permutations available. Yeah, we have a number of options. The, the ones we've announced, we've announced today are with both the Sterling, which is the large tender, and the Steric tender, which is, which is paired with for most of its life. So we're going to do both. Yeah. Uh, both will be available with sound. Yeah. Um, and then we can start to think, depending on the success of that, what variants we would do on the back of those two, yeah. uh, taking it back into its in-service time yeah. uh, pre-grouping. Yeah. So can I just add yeah. that um, I think it's the right time to do yes this type of locomotive. Mm. If you look at what's been introduced by Backman and, and Former to a certain extent, um, going back in time prior to grouping is, is, is actually now uh, the right thing to do. Yeah. I mean, arguably, uh, the pre-grouping liveries and even the locomotives are more attractive uh, in many ways, or certainly more yeah. distinctive. Uh, and yes, a lot of the, uh, the mainstream uh, uh, obvious models have been taken. So how far do you see this trend extrapolating backwards then? Well, give me a couple of years and I'll tell you. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> I think the one thing that's interesting as, we, as, as the pre-grouping periods become more and more popular is the, the, the lack of rolling stock to go with it is, yeah. is potentially an opportunity that we, we uh, are capable of exploring. And certainly with uh, at both uh, all the manufacturers' attention to detail these, these days, I think we could uh, potentially look at things like carriages and, and, and another rolling stock yeah. to, to go with the locomotive we now produce, particularly when we've got things like Sterling Single and the GNR Atlantic in, in the portfolio already, yeah. along with quite a large number of other pre-grouping locomotives now. That we've got. Okay. So where do you see the market for this, uh, for this model? How wide do you th believe the market is? Well, personally, I think it's, it's a growing market, as I've just said. I think it's certainly superb for a collector. It's certainly for somebody who just wants an attractive locomotive just to put on the shelf. But also, as Brian said, it's, it's great to, to, to run on the layout. And the important thing is, with this particular model, is that, of course, it, it, it ran in, in, if you like, BR days. Yeah. So you can have it as a preservation loco. On a, on a diesel air. Yeah. Now, with it being an exclusive uh, edition to, uh, to locomotion, uh, are you actually closing the quantities available of each of the, uh, the variations? Is it a limited number defined by the, uh, the, uh, the pre-ordering, or will you have stock available at release? The uh, agreement we've, we've uh, reached with Rapido on this model is to produce a specific volume as the first batch. Yeah. And we have pre-orders are, are available today with the same scheme we've run for APT uh, to pay a deposit. And if you pay a deposit, you're guaranteed to get one of the first batch that we do. Yeah. Depending on, on how that goes, we will, we will take a view beyond that, uh, that initial order quantity. Um, but this is it. We're kind of into unknown territory a little bit here. Uh, um, unlike the APT, where we, we're fixing on uh, only producing that which is pre-ordered. Uh, with this, there may be options downstream because I think there are probably other things we can do. Mm. And I think Sterling Single Number One will be an enduring product. Yeah. Um, so uh, will, will it be totally restricted? Um, perhaps not. But yeah. Decision not yet taken. Okay. And what's the planned development time scale for this project, the Sterling Single? Fast. <laughs> <laughs> it's uh, it's planned really for autumn 2016. For yeah. So I think we're, we're fairly confident on that. Yeah. As Brian said, a lot of engineering, model engineering to, to put into place first. But no, I think confident it's 2016. I, I don't really believe in announcing things and people having to wait three years to see it. So yeah. we've got a very tight contract in terms of production with availability before, certainly before Christmas in 2016, unless we hit significant snags in the design. Okay. Thank Can you I very just much. say, you, one of the problems I will have during interviews, breaking into Brian. <laughs> yes. Conversation. <laughs> right. <laughs> right.
here with uh, Bill Schneider for the, uh, the announcements of the Sterling Single as Locomotion's next project uh, in conjunction with Rapido. So, obviously Bill, as known as Rapido Bill on RM Web, where's Jason? He's hiding, is he? Yes. Why is he hiding? This has smoke coming out of it. He has no interest in things with smoke. Coming. Right. No, he uh, he's home with, for the holidays right now, and we have so many projects going on. We couldn't afford both to be away from the office at once. So, yeah. Uh, I'm here and happy to be here. Yeah. So he, he's not going to try and put blinking lights on it when you get back. He may try. Yeah. But it won't yeah. happen. <laughs> for those that don't know. Bill is actually the steam buff within the Rapido business. So, yeah, you're a bit of an Anglophile yourself as well, with a history of, sort of like, uh, understanding the uh, the railways of, uh, of Britain. So it's not as though this is a completely alien thing to you, is it? Not at all. Right. Not at all. Uh, both Jason and I had lived here um, both at different times. We both have an interest um, in UK models. As a matter of fact, I currently model the GWR. I have probably the only great Western branch line terminus in Connecticut. It's, you know, over here there are a dime a dozen there. Um, but uh, yes, we both have a love for, for uh, British equipment, British modeling, and myself in particular for British steam. So this yeah. is so exciting to be yeah. involved in this. Yeah. Right. So, how did you feel, obviously, about uh, coming across this project for a sterling single? Well, the, the funny part about this, and, and I, I mentioned this on the uh, web when I first made the, the post, is that you know, for anybody who saw the announcement for the APT, this should be obvious as the second one, because yeah. that silly video that we did where Jason and I were chasing ourselves back and forth. Yeah. But in fact, this did come out of that event. Yeah. Uh, we were here, and we uh, were, while we were actively scanning this, I, I, managed, I was talking to Brian. Yeah. And uh, mentioned, gee, somebody should do a model of this. And he looked at me and says, I've been trying to get somebody to do a model of this for a long time. And yeah. just one thing led to another. Yeah. And it, it's exciting to be, be able to be involved in this. It's such an iconic entry. Yeah. Okay, so obviously you're not old enough to have seen the uh, Sterling single in operation, are you? No. no. I missed it by a few years. Yeah. <laughs> okay. So we're here today, obviously, carrying out the scanning, uh, the first stage of the, right. or this stage of the, uh, the project. Right. Uh, how do you rate it in terms of a challenge on sort of like 0 to 10 scale? Good question. I think the biggest challenge with this is going to be operation. Yeah. Um, set, getting enough weight over the driver so that it has enough adhesion, getting it to, to track well and still look the part. Yeah. Um, the scan is going to be extremely helpful where there is not information because, particularly on things like the tender, yeah. um, there are not drawings yeah. available. Um, I was at the search engine at the NRM New York on Friday and did find a few um, original drawings which would be helpful, but again, it's going to be useful to compare that against the scan. Mm -hmm. The scan is obviously uh, the, the, the final proof of the technology. Yeah. So as you say there about uh, weight distribution being mm -hmm. part, uh, part yes. of it, 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 simplistically, has it got to be a 50-50 weight split either side of that driver? The weight needs to be centered on the driver as much as possible, I think, so that it gets maximum adhesion. Yeah. Um, uh, particularly if we're, if we're doing a locomotive mounting. Yeah. And, and the challenge there is the prototype was going to be very slippy as well. So yeah. that, that the, uh, you know, it, it was very light on its feet. So yeah. that, um, the challenge will be making the model such that it'll pull you know, a respectable rate of cars without, yeah. without uh, you know, having it uh, the yeah. Time. So the gearing is going to be quite important. With gearing will be important. Weight will be important. Yeah. Um, obviously, running quality, which you know, Rapido is very proud of. Yeah. Our running quality, and this is going to be up to that. Yeah. I mean, as Brian and Simon were saying, that there's a bit of a challenge as well with the uh, uh, the front bogey and the uh, the splashes around that. So it's obviously there very tight clearances there. If you look at the, at the way this engine is arranged, we were also looking at drawings the other day, and I was talking to Richard from the show. This is actually, in many respects, an 062. Yeah. Um, that front bogey has almost no side-to-side -side play on it. The splashers are fixed, mm -hmm. um, and you know, there's a little side-to-side -side movement on the front wheels, and that's it. So it's yeah. really a six-coupled wheelbase up front with a, with a trailing wheel. Yeah. Um, how that translates into the model, I'm not sure. We haven't decided that. We have yeah. thrown some ideas around, but until we get the scan and start getting into the can to see yeah. where the clearances are. 
just we're not sure how that's going to work. Do you think there could be any issues then for anybody running on tight radius curves? Well, of course, the challenge is this never had to run on number one or number two radius yeah. curves. So, um, whereas the model probably will. Yeah. And, uh, so yes, that would be the challenge. Yeah. And, Again, it's much easier to do that once it's in the computer and we can start playing around with parts clearances and so forth yeah. and, and, and run some tests. Yeah. yeah, yeah. Okay. So, in terms of wh where is the motor likely to be? Is it to, likely to be rear of the, uh, behind the driver? Ask me that in about six months. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> oh, yeah. Obviously, there's, there's, there's a, uh, it could be behind the driver, but in front of the driver coming back. Yeah. Um, I'm just not sure. Yeah. 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 We didn't even think around the idea of a tender drive, but because the locomotive is so slippery, we kind of want the idea yeah. of being able to slip the yeah. wheels, but that lets make it more complicated. Oh, somebody will probably ask the question, will it have uh, traction tires on the main driver? <laughs> we don't do traction tires. Okay. <laughs> right, okay, so, I mean, what are we looking at in terms of development time scales? When are we likely to see sort of like, uh, certain things happening through the, uh, the project? Um, we'll start in on this uh, right away when I get home, uh, which will be next week. We'll start uh, some general drawings, some general uh, um, design thoughts. And uh, once we get the 3D scan done, we'll get into the uh, real hard work. Yeah. Yeah. Um, I believe that we've, we've targeted uh, the world of 2016 as being the final release, so everything yeah. will be in between. I'm hoping that by Worley uh, next year. Okay. Okay, I'm outside now, in front of the Ivor Atlantic, with Sandra, as most of you all know, and uh, already know Sandra, who uh, hides behind the login of Locomotion at Shildon. But Sandra is very much sort of the uh, uh, the retail wing of the uh, the business up here, uh, and has been taking care of uh, the people who order all of the uh, the products uh, over the uh, the last couple of years or so. So, what you brought you into this as a retailing at Locomotion? What brought me into it? Well, I did work in the shop. Yeah. Then we started the website, and it just sort of deviated from there. Yeah. So now I am a, a models queen. Right. So, you're the queen of the models here. <laughs> here. Okay, so what, what is your role then uh, up here at Locomotion? My role, I um, input everything onto the website, monitor the website, take the orders off wrap the orders up, dispatch the orders, although now I don't take them to the post office because we were bad. <laughs> uh, we took far too many parcels, so they said, that's it, you've had it. So we had to find alternative arrangements. Right. But yeah, that's what I do. I speak to people on the phone, go to shows, although we're only going to do Wally in York yeah. now. Yeah. But yeah, speak to people and... Yeah. But it's a busy time for you at the moment, isn't it? It is. We've got the Atlantics are starting to arrive now, so it's a case of wrapping and shipping. We had the launch today for the Sterling single, which is, I just had a quick look on the website there before I came out, and it's going exceptionally well, right. because this is one that people have wanted for a long, long time. Yeah. If you ask them, what's your wish list? Yeah. This is always on, that's one of them that's always on there. Yeah, okay. Really good. Big. And just one thing to mention, mm. the first time ever, we are now in Russia. We got an order from Russia this morning. Really? So, yeah, right. pleased about that. Yeah. Do you get a lot of business then from the... Uh, uh, Commonwealth, sort of Australia, New Zealand, Australia, Canada. big, big yeah. in Australia, America, Canada. Um, we've got a, a gentleman in South Africa, right. Bermuda, Hawaii. I'm yeah. going to visit all these people. So oh, yeah. watch I'm out! Delivered. I'm going to visit. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, all over the world. It's brilliant. All over Europe as well. Yeah, it's it just amazed me anyway when they start coming in where yeah. people live and. And where they just keep an eye on what's going on at the NRM. Yeah, so it, it's not just a museum gift shop in the conventional sense at all, is it? Definitely not. I mean, we now a home concession store, so you can get anything you want in the shop. Um, it's just the national collection in miniature. Yeah. Some people collect it. Some people like to run them. You know, for different reasons. People remember them from steam days. Yeah. Their dads worked on them. Their granddads worked. So they have to have one. Yeah. But it's it's amazing. There's some lovely people who I get to chat to. Oh great. Yeah, because you're a friendly sort. Aren't I you? am. Yeah. I am. Yeah. I'm a northern lass. That's why. Yeah. <laughs> and it's very noticeable that you do look after customers as well. The uh, rapport that you have with people. I like to. I mean, I know how I would like to be treated when I'm buying something and. Some people just stick in your mind anyway, so you'll yeah. always remember them. Um, other things, if you know, if you're going somewhere, 
Um, I was down at Bournemouth the other week, and if the two five ones had come in, there's a gentleman down there who was going to take it down, but they didn't come in in time anyway. You take so this I'm sorry for seriously. that. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, but then you go in and have a cup of tea and a piece of cake. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so it has yeah. its perks. Yeah, yeah. So I mean, as you say, you'll be at Warley Show with the uh, uh, the stand. How do you like going to the exhibitions like this? Well, York we've done for a few years now. I love yeah. it. It's tiring. It's hard work, but. There's some really nice people that go there, you have a bit chat and yeah, yeah they, some of them yeah, say what they think about them, whether it's good or bad. <laughs> but Wally was the first time I went there last year. People told me what it was like, so I really wasn't sure what to expect. Yeah. Busy, hectic, but I loved it. It was yeah. brilliant and we had such an exceptional weekend. And everything we sell makes money for the NRM so yeah. we can do projects in the workshop yeah. you know we can even borrow things like signs and gates right. it all helps everything helps yeah fantastic mm. okay well I wish you well obviously Thank with the uh, the launch of the Atlantic and uh, uh, if anybody does want to uh, order the uh, 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 the Sterling single that all of the details are on the locomotion models website bye so, <laughs> Just to introduce Craig Crane to you, uh, Craig Crane is the uh, the brains behind Motion Associates. Now it might seem a little bit of an odd title for somebody in our context who you think is uh, laser scanning the Sterling symbol here. So maybe a little bit to ask you about where the Motion Associates bit comes from. Well, you know what, I've just been thinking maybe I should call it Local Motion Associates, <laughs> seeing that we're doing a lot of trains. Um, well, my background is visual effects and film. Uh, started off uh, many, many years ago as a puppeteer for uh, the Jim Henson Company and Smith & Um Saw the end of that uh, as soon as computer animation started to take hold. Um, and then from computer animation into uh, motion capture, which I still do. Um, and then about six years ago, um, I was asked by uh, a visual effects company to have a look at laser scans because they were um, experiencing troubles with data getting from elsewhere. And I kind of arrived at the conclusion that I could do it quicker, faster, and cheaper um, without compromising the quality. So, um, the core of my business is servicing the British film industry, visual effects. Um, so my biggest clients are Marvel, Disney, Warner Brothers, 20th Century Fox. And we've got three films on the go at the moment. Um, but I'm also a railway model. And um, I have a, a layout in the bar because I was not allowed to have one in the doors. Um, and I was just sitting there one evening and I had some movie live steam going around, beer in hand, and I was thinking, you know, I reckon what I do could be applicable to the modern railway manufacturers. Because I was looking at I was looking at the models that I had at the time, which were the stuff I had as a kid, which are a great time but basically like a day stack. And I was looking at the stuff coming out all the back on it. Uh, you know, which is obviously uh, a, a world of difference compared to what we have um, back then. So I sent off um, an email to all these and said, you know what, I'd like to do a laser scan for you, let's do it for a test. And they were kind of like, no, okay, we'll do a test. Got them hooked. Uh, then we did some scans for uh, another company who do die casts um, and did a lot of scans for them. And then we had a phone call through Jason and Bill yep. saying, you know, uh, we love the scan that you did for the 71, uh, could, you, could you do the same thing for us? And I was like, absolutely. So this has been this has been uh, planned now. Well, I knew that we were doing this about a month ago. And um, it's great because I've always wanted to come here. It's a six hour drive for me, so this isn't a trip that I would make. Um, so we arrived yesterday, we've got two scanners on the go, we're already piecing it together now so that Bill can send stuff back to Jason and see that stuff's already progressing. Um, so yeah, it's great. Uh, it's a departure from what we do, obviously, yeah. but I'm a great believer in doing stuff you enjoy doing. So this is kind of like a busman's holiday. Yes, I'm out scanning, but yeah. I'm 
some scanning loss. It's something that you have an interest in, in making sure that the yeah. end result is uh, uh, as good as possible. Yeah, I mean, I wouldn't say I wouldn't say that I am a diehard railway enthusiast. I couldn't tell you anything about this train. I couldn't tell you what it runs with, or when it ran. Um, but I appreciate it, and I appreciate the fact that by getting the scans right from the get go, the minute this hits the shelf, this is going to be the definitive version. It's any of the that's hitting the shelf, but it's going to be the most accurate version that has ever been possible to build based on the scan and also based on the fact that I want to see this going around my garden as well. Yeah. You know, so I'm not going to sell the second best. Um, it's going to be awesome. I spoke to the rest of the team about the, chair, the engineering challenges and the yeah. modelling challenges within it, but it's actually been challenging for you in here today inside the museum as yeah. well, hasn't it? Yeah, there's been a few, a few challenges. Um, normally when you film, normally when you're on a film, you tend to scan when all the filming is finished. So as soon as the director calls cut and the ADs have got everyone out the stage and everyone's gone home, we roll in, we scan through the night, so we have an environment that's completely empty and we own it for that duration. Uh, when you come here, this is a, you know, it's a working museum and people are here uh, on a day out. So um, there's a lot of people milling about. There's two scanners, both of which are being used at night, they're about 40 grand a piece. Trains that are priceless and people milling about, you know, you know not in the days, but you know, they're looking around. So yeah. that's, if anything's going to happen, if anyone's going to walk into a scanner that's there and fall over it, it's a priceless train today's the day. Yeah. So I've literally been eagle eyes. Yeah. You know, even now I'm sort of looking at you, but I'm also looking yeah. at what's going on over there. Well, obviously you're on edge in, in that context, but as you uh, said to me earlier, it's easier to scan this indoors today rather than outdoors in the bright sunlight we've got today. Yeah, I mean sunlight presents a few problems. The, the, the lasers are infrared, and, but they do pick up, um, if this was out in the sunlight, that very narrow band of uh, the light spectrum from the sun that is infrared would hit the very shiny paintwork and then that would cause us to have uh, spikes on the surface. But they're not like hotspots on a two-dimensional um, photo. Um, these are these actually take shape. So you would actually have, if that say for example was the, the, the coach work, you would then have this very long spike of points heading towards the direction of the light source, high yeah. in the sun. So the fact that we're into this is great. Um, presents challenges nonetheless. It's black. It's shiny. Um, two things that don't scan very well unless you scan in a very particular manner. Um, but all in all, you know, we're halfway through, we've been scanning for four hours, um, we've gone off the side, in between the centers, we've been scanning up and over as well, so we're getting stuff from height. So we're now coming around the front, going up the other side, piecing it together as we go along. So hopefully by the time we actually wrap tonight at five o'clock, the guys from Rapido and Locomotion can actually look at three-dimensional point cloud that haven't got away from it. Well, we're already seeing that data being converted into a point cloud that we've seen, uh, looked at some data uh, uh, on the screen. So it's amazing how quickly it starts to come together visually. But what needs to happen with this uh, data from this, uh, from today onwards? Uh, magic laser fairies mm. come into play. Um, so what happens is we have, uh, by the time we finish, I think we'll have about 50 or so hours. None of the scans have any physical relationship to the scan before or after. So they all come in all over the place, nothing lines up. So the first thing we do is we have to basically coax each individual scan in a three-dimensional workspace to occupy the correct world space to its counterpart. Yeah. So the scan before has to link to the scan after and after and after. When you get that alignment correct, which is called registration, those 40-odd point clouds each one measuring millions of points per cloud. Um, you then basically unify those, so then those 40 or different point clouds become one cohesive point cloud. The next step is to then go in and tidy up any errors in the point cloud, i.e. Um, noise that you might get from reflective surfaces, some of the brass work on the valve gear, you might need a little bit of a, a, a clean up. Um, as you can probably see here, there's the hint of the person walking through the scan. Yeah. So 
I can spend a good couple of hours just <coughs> joyfully deleting people. Um, once they're gone, they're gone. And from there we then turn um, that point cloud that's been cleaned um, into a solid OBJ polygonal mesh. Yeah. That's my job done. Yeah. That then goes off to the client Hilo Locomotion Board. Um, that then goes into the CAD pipeline and then their CAD artists will basically trace over yeah. the LiDAR scan um, to generate new CAD. But because obviously it's a one-to-one -one representation, everything is everything that they build is built on to the LiDAR. Therefore, ensuring that everything is the correct dimension, yeah. has the correct placement, the correct angles, the correct curvature of the body. You know, there's some pretty complex curves on mm. this one. Just you know, just coming under the chimney, that whole complex curve there, the fillet on the chimney, and then, you know, it'll take a long time to actually do that traditionally by hand. You know, using draftsman's techniques. Here we've got a 3D model; it's already there. Yeah. So, yeah, it expedites. I think the reason why a lot of the uh, manufacturers now are heading down this road is because it expedites the R&D, yeah. which is a huge cost saving. Yeah. You know, instead of spending six weeks, eight weeks bowing through drawings or putting your hair out, you can get to it and scan it. It takes a day to scan, yeah. a couple of days to turn the days around, you know, you're already ahead of the game. Yeah. And once you've developed that data, yeah. there can be a degree of rendering carried out to give a visualisation for the uh, end consumer as to what the project looks a little bit like. Yeah. The, the tricky thing is with the film work that we do, we have to work under very, very strict um, security guidelines. Mm. I mean, my, my office is like Fort Knox. It's been, you know, all the studios tested to make sure that no one can hack in, no one can have stuff going out. They're very, they're very rightly so precious about yeah. their content. They don't want any of Avengers 2 leaking out, you know, public. so we work very hard to make sure. This is slightly different because once this is in the public domain, i.e. once this has been announced, I can actually be a little bit of a tar and actually do a nice little fly around render yeah. there and you know and, and show what we can do um, because we can't show the film stuff. Yeah. So I can kind of make a bit so I'm gonna do the same with this as we did with the 71 as you know video yeah. the environment, remove the environment few fly throughs, you know, yeah. hand that over to the guys over at Locomotion and they can stick yeah. it on their website. Well, I look forward to seeing that. Okay, great. So, just showing you here how some of the challenges of people around, these are all oh. the people. Um, of course, the thing that we're interested in is really just the train. So this is a handful of scans already loaded. I'll show you some. You can drag this out, and you can see the other trains down yeah. by the side. Um, the APT there yeah but at the end of the day the only thing we're interested in at the moment is this yeah so um, if I hide that bounding box we this is just the raw data so this hasn't been cleaned up mm. but what we are getting is you know inside the cab yeah you know you can see people here that I need to clean up yeah so this is the rawest data in its rawest form yeah you'll notice that there's some noise here along the, the black. Yeah. You know, that's just where the laser hits it at a funny angle. And reflects so, it. Yeah, and, yeah. and reflects it. So we'll clean all that up, remove all that stuff. Um, but we're getting really good, you know, really good solve here on the, on the valve gear. Yeah. Um, bear in mind, this is only showing you one tenth of the data that has been captured. Yeah. Um, you can actually see you can actually see where the, the second scanner has been scanned by, yeah. by the first scanner. Yeah. Um, so this will take um, some cleaning up, not huge amounts. Yeah. Uh, but the nicest thing that you you know, it also allows you to do um, if you do have access to the drawings. Yeah. You can actually do some really nice sort of analysis. So you can actually look 
at, uh, the, yes. pro at the profile of the boiler. Yeah. Um, if I just pull that. So if they do have access to the drawers as well, they can do some really nice. Um, hang on, just. I've lost myself. There I am. So yeah, you can build cross sections yeah, at any yeah. point. Absolutely. Yeah. Absolutely. So you know, if you want to find out specifically, you know, how far this box comes out from the boiler. Yeah. You no, know, I mean we can do. I mean, I can tell you actually how far. You know, the exact distance. And this is this is why this approach is much more um, advantageous than just going around with a ruler and a camera. Yeah. Um, because because you can actually select points and actually say what is the distance between that point and that point. You know. And it's telling you it's 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 literally 20 centimeters. Yeah. You know, um, on the nose. Um, if you want to find out what's the height of, you know, from this point to this point. Seventy-four centimeters. Seventy-four point eight centimeters. Yeah. Know? So now we've actually captured this data, and, and the locomotive has been digitized. In theory, this data could actually be, you know, handed back over to the museum. Say, look, have this um, to complement your paper archives. You've yeah. now got a digitised yeah. archive, and for other reasons as well. You know, God forbid anything happened to it if it got damaged. If there was storm damage and a bit of the ceiling came down, yeah, crashing yeah. into the boiler. You know, yeah. oh, we need to we need to machine something. You know, yeah. well, now you've got a laser scan. You can actually go in and. Good point. Yeah, yeah. yeah. So it's not just about preserving the low codes for the model railway sector. I actually do believe that, you know, there's a lot of mileage in actually scanning this stuff yeah. for future generations, yeah. you know, um, so that they can, if they need to, build, rebuild bits. Yeah, yeah. Um, because, you know, in a generation's time, yeah. people aren't going to be around to you as much as they don't do yeah. now. So yeah, I'm all I'm all up for digitising the entire museum. <laughs> Brilliant. Got films to make. Right, everybody, it's the uh, the end of the day here at Locomotion after a busy day uh, scanning for the uh, scan party for Locomotion and Rapido and the Sterling single. So, how's it all gone today then? Pretty fantastic, actually. Yeah. Seventy six scans, two scanners, lots of people milling around. Yeah. Um, a few near misses with a couple of toddlers. Had a uh, almost had a scanner child interaction. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> How much would that have cost? That would have the scanners. The child are, probably. Yeah. <laughs> the scanners are about uh, between thirty-five and forty-five dollars. Yeah. So that would have been a very yeah. But you're happy with the data that uh, very that much so. You've got very that we've much started so. to see. Yep. So the plan is uh, back to the office tomorrow. Um, I'm going to take out the roof because the, the, the shape of the roof is pretty uniform right the way back so I'm going to remove that from the equation so I get a much tighter registration around the locomotive yeah. and then what we'll do is we'll do all the post-processing, we'll do a nice little fly around video so um, you can use that um, and it's actually quite interesting because the scanner was, um, one, two, three, it was about three and a half meters high, four meters at its highest so we're not just getting the the, the locomotive that we came here for, we're actually getting right the way back to the back yeah. of the museum. So there's a lot of stuff that was captured as a consequence. <laughs> That'll be great. The say, next right 14 right. projects we yes. have more yeah. <laughs> <laughs> All done in one. Yeah. yeah. So Simon, from your point of view, an enjoyable day? Yeah, no, brilliant actually. Um, I'm a little bit lost because Brian's not here, so you know, yeah. I've, I'm, I'm able to say a few words. Yes. Uh, <laughs> yeah. uh, 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 you know, which is always a bonus. Uh, no, it's been generally speaking, it's been a terrific day. Um, the, the guys at Locomotion have been absolutely could not have have done more to facilitate such a, a, a superb piece of scanning. And um, yeah, it, it's terrific. I'm looking forward now to going back to the hotel with Marcelino. Exactly. Yeah. Yeah. It's, it's a big new project for everybody. Yeah. I mean, in the uh, the collective team. And it's the first steam loco that we'll be seeing sort of like in Rapido. From Rapido, yes. Yeah. yeah. And Exciting. you've had a lot to do with that, haven't you, Bill? A little bit. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So modest. Been flying the flag there. Yeah. So from your point of view, how's the day gone? Phenomenal. Okay. Um, the, the quality of the scan work looks great. Um, this crew, 
uh, like Sun was saying, it's just an amazing group of people to mm -hmm. work with. They have just been phenomenal. Yeah. And uh, every time we come back here, it, it, it's, uh, it's it's fantastic. So okay. yeah, we're looking forward to this. So the next milestone from where we are today, what's the, what happens next? Um, well, I suppose the next step from our point of view is we have to deliver um, a solid OBJ polygonal mesh. Um, that then gets handed over um, to these guys who will then take, once we've handed that over, we're done. We're, yeah. we're, 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 we're back to the day job. So um, we won't see anything probably um, from our endeavours until you know the public see yeah. or whatever mm -hmm. come you know little snippets and tests and what have you. Yeah, so. we'll send it. Yeah, awesome. Mm -hmm. Yeah, but keep us all updated with uh, with progress as much as you can. Anyway. Right. Yeah, I think it's just it's just keeping people informed. As you say, you know, we have some images of scans, we'll have yeah. shots off yeah. the tools. Et cetera. And as the we'll, process we'll share, we'll share the CAD drawings yeah. that are yeah. generated, so, which is our normal process. Yeah. And Sandra says that on day one that uh, there's been healthy interest, obviously, from uh, uh, the online orders already. It's very exciting. Yeah, yeah, it yeah. is. Yeah, okay. following, following the thread, actually, on the, uh, on, on the website today, it's just as soon as that announcement was made, the, the flow of positivity. Mm. Yeah, I have to look at it tonight. I haven't had a chance oh, it's to get great. It. It's, a, it's, it's a great read. Got a little busy today. Yeah. Yeah. It's yeah. a great read. Yeah. Okay. Anyway, thank you. All right. Thanks, thank you all. all right. yeah, yeah, brilliant day. Cheers. Cheers. Thank you.